Today, uh, I'm going to present a new context sensitivity for the uh, control flow integrity that we called actually origin sensitive CFI. This is a collaborative work with my other uh, colleagues, Wenchen Leo, Abu Nasser, and my professor Ji Wang and Jay Yang from Florida State University. So uh, if we look into any program, we will find out there are two version of code pointers. One is the return address, the other one is the function pointer. Um, and for both of them, there are different uh, solutions available. For the for function pointer, we have a uh, forward ace protection mechanism like CFI. So the CFI actually uh, enforce uh, some policy in the indirect call point, uh, and the, uh, the policy is actually uh, validated through a pre-computed control flow graph. So, uh, so there are actually three parts of a CFI system, CFI policy, the reference monitor, and the CFG. Uh, so uh, the problem uh, with the CFI is that uh, if the policy is not strong enough, there will be still some uh, attack space on the uh, control flow uh, graph. So uh, attackers can actually bypass those uh, uh, attack surface. Uh, instead, there are a CFI policy enforced. So we use context sensitive CFI to actually uh, minimize that attack surface when the CFI is uh, CFI is exist in the system. Um, we uh, in our uh, in our previous uh, project uh, that is adaptive uh, call size sensitive CFI uh, published in Euro S and P 2019. We have used the, this formula uh, for actually uh, calculate the security guarantee of any CFI. We have seen that we have reduced average equivalence class size uh, by using call size sensitivity, but we have also found that the largest equivalent class size is still very, uh, uh, very large. So we actually go through those case studies and find out that, okay, we need something else than the regular context sensitivity like path sensitivity or call size sensitivity. So uh, let's go to a motivation uh, example from the uh, 471 Omnitap benchmark. So we can see here that uh, there is a code pointer that is a code to execute, uh, exec, uh, that is a private member function, uh, function pointer of class execute on startup. And this, uh, if we look into the indirect call point inside the execute method and its con context, we can find out that it is actually an iteration over a list of object from, of the execute on startup. So there is actually no difference of different indirect calls on this context. They are all same because they are just a list. And the list can have different order of objects. So uh, the regular path sensitivity or con uh, cost sensitivity is not going to work on this kind of cases. But if we look into the other part, like the, where, the object, uh, where the code pointer gets the target value, then we can find out that, OK, the assignment operation is inside the constructor function of execute on startup, and this assignment, uh, the target is actually received by the argument passing from this constructor called sites. So if we can connect those two information, the origin and its own context, then we can actually precisely find out which, uh, uh, which object should call which uh, target in this indirect call point inside the execute method. So this is what we have called the origin sensitivity. So for the virtual function call, the origin sensitivity means where the object is created. That is actually the constructor function call. For the C style indirect call, we have decided, OK, we, we, it should be the address taken code location of the code pointer. But the problem with the C style code, uh, indirect call is that this assignment operation is not a single point. It actually has multiple indirect uh, in intermediate steps. Like in the right side code, we can find out that, OK, the target is actually assigned by the callee function call, but there are more in uh, intermediate uh, uh, statements inside the callee function, like the argument uh, 
uh, argument to the temporary variables, then there could be an assignment operation inside the local variable. So we need to, if, if we want to keep the origin, uh, uh, the original definition of the origin, then it will be a lot of overhead on the system. So we decide to modify the definition for, of the origin for the C style code pointer because the virtual function call, it is fine. We don't need to worry about this one. For the C style code pointer, we decide, okay, the origin will be the most recent assignment operation of the code pointer, and we will replace the intermediate statements or the final state, uh, the original state using the call sites of this origin. So here, if we look into this example, now we only have origin and origin context, and we can identify the target for that indirect call inside the calling. So before jumping to the next uh, step, we actually like to see, okay, how effectively it works. So we actually generate uh, the CFG using some dynamic method, and we have found this result. So we can see that it works pretty much well for most of the benchmark. There are some benchmark like 445, a Go BMK benchmark, that we, we see that the largest EC size is not reduced. The reason for this one is that the Go BMP benchmark on this indirect call using a static function pointer array that is iterating over uh, from this indirect call using a loop. So there is actually no context, no origin, because the array is static. So, as far as uh, we have found that, okay, the result is uh, good for most of the benchmark, we go to the, uh, we, we try to design a system using the origin sensitivity. So the OSCFI actually uh, focus on uh, four uh, issues, uh, the precision, security, performance, and compatibility. So compatibility means uh, we want to support both the C and C++ objects. So, OSCFI policy actually use two different policies in this, uh, in, as it is CFI policy. The first one is the call size sensitivity. The second one is the origin sensitivity that we are proposing here. So we use the policy for an individual indirect call where it gets the better result with that policy. So if the indirect call is better with origin sensitivity, it will use the origin sensitivity. So security guarantee is the first priority here. So the, if we look into, uh, we, are, we are not going through the call site century instrumentation part because uh, it's already discussed in previous work. So we actually focus on the origin sensitivity instrumentation. So if we look into this part, uh, we have uh, two, different store, uh, two different kind of store metadata trace function. Uh, one is for the virtual uh, call, the other one is for the code pointer. So, for the virtual call, we have the store metadata function call inside the constructor, and the constructor uh, and the origin location is assigned using a constructor, a constructor pointer as same as the virtual pointer is passed with the constructor. And it, it, the, the data is stored into a table that we, uh, we will discuss about the table later. For the, for the uh, C style function pointer, it is just simply when there is an assignment to the function pointer, we just update the table. And at the indirect call point, we just check, okay, what reference or what kind of uh, reference monitor will be used on that pointer, uh, on that code, uh, indirect call location, and we will check using the verification me mechanism on that point. So uh, the next issue is the CFG generation. So we use a static uh, point to analysis uh, method for the safe generation. Uh, we use the SUPA. This is, uh, this is uh, published in FSE uh, conference in 2016, I think so. I forgot, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, this is actually an on-demand context flow and field sensitive points to analysis that is actually based on a previous work that is SBFG. So, the SUPA actually uh, are traversing system over the SBFG definition use, uh, definition use chain rules. And it traverses into the reverse way. Like uh, if there is an indirect call that is a sync and it will traverse through the 
uh, through the def definition use chain to find out origin or the source of, the, of this indirect call. So we just use a piggyback system to actually just okay, there is a traversing system, we are going through this one and we will collect our information on this time. So we don't have any like, big contribution here, but we trusted what they have done. Now, uh, the work uh, SUPA is actually, uh, it's actually really good. It works really good, it's scalable, precise, uh, almost precise, uh, and it's publicly available. And um, in the FSE, FSE conference, it actually evaluated, the artifact is evaluated as platinum. Uh, but still, when we run the system with the spec benchmark, we have found that a lot, there are a lot of cases when the budget is, uh, like we have found the, uh, the budget we have allocated for the static analysis is not enough for the, those spec benchmark indirect calls or there are also some technical issues, like pointer to member function is not handled, so it returns an empty set for that, uh, for that indirect call. So we tried to actually refine whatever data this, the SOP system give us as error and try to refine it like as much possible as, pos uh, as we can, but we we want to show the result here because we want to show that the static point of analysis still need a lot of work to do. Although this, is the, this work is the best work in the static point of analysis uh, uh, section, it still has a lot of issues. Okay, now it's time to the, okay, we can talk about the table, metadata tables. Uh, so we use Intel MPX, uh, we actually repurpose the uses of the uh, MPX table. Um, so in the MPX table, we have to give two, uh, point, uh, two address, the pointer address and what the pointer targets to. And using these two address, we can create a pair and we can have two different cells in the bounce table that is for actually that is actually for the uh, like the uh, storing the bound information like the lower bound and upper bound. We use the lower bound upper bound to actually store the origin and origin context. So we have we created a, a, a pair for the pointer address and pointer target, and we store the origin and origin context on that pair. So if uh, if someone if uh, someone tries to actually uh, load. Uh, a pointer with a wrong pointer address, the load will be failed. So that actually uh, ensures us the code pointer integrity part. And for the CFI part, we have the reference monitor that actually enforces the uh, policy on that, uh, on using this uh, load information. So there is also an issue with, okay, how we are going to maintain the integrity of those three things, the metadata, the context, and the reference monitor. So Intel uh, MPX already uh, ensures uh, a lot uh, the security of itself using dedicated uh, registers, and also it, it support the ASLR. So we trust on the, that system. It's already proved uh, by the Intel. And uh, for the context, the context is actually the call, uh, call stack. And we don't have yet, but Intel CT is going to be available very soon. So we can use this uh, uh, Intel CT for the, call, for the secure call stack, but at this moment, we have used the safe stack uh, for our evaluation, and the result is based on safe stack. Uh, the reference monitor is protected by the Intel TSX. Um, it's just uh, we have ensured that the race condition will not be a cause for the, for the uh, enforcing um, mechanism. So there is another issue because we, uh, our CFG is based on LLVM IR. We have to convert the LLVM IR to the assembly uh, or the target program uh, language. So uh, we use uh, level as value that actually we create uh, a level where we need uh, our context, and, and we collect those levels into an array, and then assembler automatically converts those uh, 
uh, level, LLVM IR level to the, uh, to the instruction address. So in this way, we can support the ASLR, which is better than the previous uh, applied exam, uh, system like debug information or heuristics. So in our evolution, we focus on uh, improvements and, uh, and some uh, experiments. So if we uh, just filter out the cases of, of the failing cases for, from the state point we can see there are good uh, improvement, like 60% average larger size reduction. And if we count all of them, the failing case, then we can see that the improvement actually goes out of sight. So the problem is not the policy. The problem is actually the static point strain analysis system. Uh, for the case study, uh, there, are, there is a case study for the virtual called case in the left side because we are already uh, time out of time, so I'm just skipping this one right now. So this is one of the problems that we cannot solve using either the call size sensitivity or path sensitivity or the origin sensitivity because a static array does not have any of those uh, connected information. And we have this synthesized exploitation example here, uh, where we actually shows that we actually need both the pointer integrity and also the CFI system for any program. We cannot actually uh, use one of them and not another. We need to use both of them. Uh, for the performance, uh, we have shown that um, Using, uh, if we don't use the Intel TSX, the performance overhead is 7.1%, uh, and if we use the Intel TSX, the performance overhead is 7.6%. So it's pretty much good, and the CFG generation has like almost like 5% overhead. Uh, I am not going through the related work, so just make the conclusion here. So we pre present origin sensitivity as a new context sensitivity for the CFI system. We have repurposed the Intel MPX for the tracing mechanism, and we have shown that the static point strain analysis system need more work and more focus to actually be applicable into the complex system or real world system. Uh, the source code is available here, and the previous paper will be available here. Thank you. Um, questions? John Criswell, University of Rochester. So I'm a little bit confused about your, um, your metric for measuring improvement. If I understand correctly, you're, you're measuring equivalence classes in which like a set of, a set of targets are in the same equivalence class. Uh, the equi so yeah, the, qu the quanti uh, quantity security uh, guarantee calculator is based on average equivalent classes multiplied by the largest, like the worst case of the equivalence classes. Okay. So, 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 so it's, kind of, it's kind of like the error metric, but you're measuring equivalence classes as opposed to number of targets eliminated. The, so the equivalent class actually shows you that, okay, if for this indirect call point, what is the OST size of the target? Right, the, num the number of targets that you can have for, for a particular indirect call site. Yes, yeah, so if we have a lower number, we have a better security guarantee on that indirect call point. Okay, so that's, that's like my little gripe there, right? So... Um, Yes, you're reducing the number of targets, but I think something else that would be helpful to include in a metric if possible, and this is like an open problem, so it's not a, really a criticism, right? But um, is how dangerous those targets actually are, right? So some targets may be completely useless for an attacker and others may be quite yeah. valuable. So if you, if you consider uh, the cases, of the motivation cases we have shown, mm -hmm. so it actually, the, this is actually an OmniTap is a network-based system. So those indirect calls actually indicates, like, actually decides what will happen after assignment. Like, this network will execute those uh, code locations. So this is actually really an important part because if you consider if there is a small network that actually try to execute for a large network, that is a really big problem because. That's actually changed everything uh, of our I, program. Maybe we should chat offline. OK, sure. Hey, thank you. OK, uh, let's thank um, Stucky Morgan. Yeah, thank you.